Hello everyone, welcome to Solid Cells classes. Uh, today we are going to discuss the CAT 2019 slot 2 verbal section. Now before I start, uh, I want to uh, tell you something very interesting. Uh, very often I have heard uh, students coming to me and telling me that uh, the verbal section is very tough, you know, it's uh, not comprehensible and they were not able to uh, answer questions and so on and so forth. And when I ask them uh, what is so difficult about the verbal part, uh, the most uh, frequent answer that I get is there are words that uh, we couldn't understand or, you know, there are meanings that we don't understand um, and so on. So today I'll, I'll teach you a technique uh, by which you don't need to understand or know the meaning of uh, each and every word. Uh, it is good enough if you know the meaning of uh, some of the words or uh, the most commonly used words, right? And that technique is called uh, the rule of keywords. The rule, rule of keywords. Now we'll see what that means. So what we'll do is as we go through the passage and we go through the passage only once as we go through the passage we will list down certain keywords that we will use to answer all the questions we will not come back to the passage at a later point in time so let's let's get started <coughs> the first passage starts off by saying the magic of squatter cities is that they are improved steadily and gradually by their residents. So what does uh, this mean? This means that uh, there is a kind of city and uh, let's assume that we don't know the meaning of squatter uh, cities. So there, are, there is a kind of cities called squatter cities and the characteristic of that city is gradual improvement gradual improvement so squatter cities and gradual improvement are the keywords from the first sentence gradual improvement we can also say gradual change gradual transformation all these are related words they are one and the same thing so gradual change or gradual improvement or gradual transformation means the same thing to a planner's eye these cities look chaotic i trend as a biologist and to my eye they look organic now notice that uh, the words chaotic and organic are uh, kind of antonyms here uh, meaning that they have uh, different meanings or opposite meanings. Chaotic means something which is uh, very random, which has no order. And organic means something which is uh, very ordered, uh, regimented, uh, which uh, grows gradually, uh, like we call organic growth. Um, you know, all organisms grow steadily and, and gradually. So. Uh, organic means there is uh, some amount of order, discipline and growth. So uh, let's note down the word organic as well. Um, squatter cities are also unexpectedly green. So the next uh, characteristic that is mentioned is green which means eco-friendly or environment friendly environment friendly uh, they have maximum density so maximum density is the next characteristic maximum density Maximum density also means they are very compact. That means there is a, a there are a lot of people who are 
living in a very small area of land and if you notice the next sentence elaborates that point one million people per square mile in some areas of Mumbai so Mumbai is given as an example of compactness or maximum density now uh, notice one thing when we are listing down the keywords we will also list out the relevant examples that are given to highlight or um, illustrate some of those uh, points people get around by foot bicycle rickshaw or universal shared taxi so this is a characteristic of uh, a very densely populated city uh, so uh, from the first paragraph we've already understood that you know that there is something called squatter cities and uh, some of the characteristics of, of these kind of cities is you know gradual improvement or transformation organic in nature uh, environment friendly and very compact let's move on to the next para not everything is efficient in the slums though so here there is a slightly negative statement not everything is efficient so in the first para everything uh, that was told was very positive but in the second para uh, we are told that not everything is efficient that means there is there can be or there is some degree of inefficiency at least in certain slums in brazilian favelas now note the word favelas we might not know the meaning of the term but we can understand that it is trying to illustrate the concept of slum so it is nothing but a kind of slum in brazilian favelas where electricity is stolen and therefore free people leave their lights on all day so not everything is efficient and brazilian favela or brazil brazil is an example um, to illustrate this point but in most slums recycling is a lit is literally a way of life so uh, recycling is another characteristic of these kind of slums so we note this point down so we will note recycling as the next point the next uh, characteristic of these kind of cities recycling now note that recycling is related to eco-friendliness because when you recycle materials you are keeping the environment clean uh, the Taravi slum in Mumbai has 400 recycling units and 30,000 rack pickers and then the rest of this paragraph uh, you know goes on illustrating how recycling works in mumbai vietnam mozambique and uh, some other cities in asia and latin america so this this is just uh, an illustrative uh, example so recycling and uh, uh, this is a characteristic and uh, the examples given are mumbai then um, Vietnam, Mozambique, and cities in Asia and Latin America. So these are the uh, illustrative examples given. In the next para, it says in his 80, uh, 1985 article, Calthorpe made a statement that still jars with most people. Kalthop was a uh, person who made a statement uh, that jars with most people means it doesn't resonate or annoys or uh, people don't agree to his statement. That is the meaning of jar. Uh, the city is most environmentally benign form of human settlement. Now note the word environmentally benign which is nothing but eco-friendly so uh, so we can write Calthorpe trying to uh, illustrate or uh, strengthen this uh, this 
point that cities are environmentally friendly or eco-friendly or uh, environmentally benign, whatever you call it. Each city dweller consumes less land, less energy, less water and produces less pollution than his counterpart in settlements of lower densities. Now, uh, this is again a very interesting concept uh, where, um, and this is illustrated in more details in the, in the subsequent uh, sentences, is the fact that when you live in a very compact area, you have uh, a compact area, you have less resources or limited resources. Therefore, you cannot be wasteful. So you have to be more efficient in usage of the resources. So this is the recurrent theme or the, or the underlying theme which is being discussed in this paragraph. So uh, if you are uh, living in a, in a um, very compact area, uh, you are very um, conservative in nature, you don't waste uh, land, energy, water um, and therefore you are uh, contributing positively to the environment. So next we see the example of Green Manhattan uh, which is cited as an example of a green city. Um, New York is the greenest community in the United States. So again, um, as an example of eco-friendliness or uh, greenness, we have the example of New York. Um, the key to New York's relative environmental benignity is its extreme compactness. So as I was explaining that uh, when, you are, when you are living in a very compact or you know, densely populated uh, area, you have limited resources and therefore you cannot afford to be wasteful. So you try to conserve resources, you try to use uh, less of land, less of water uh, and therefore you become more efficient um, and uh, you, you become more en environment friendly or more eco-friendly. So uh, the next uh, lines illustrates this further, placing one and a half million people on a 23 square mile island sharply reduces their opportunities to be wasteful. So this is what I was saying, you cannot be wasteful. Uh, he went on to note that this very compactness forces people to live in the world's most energy efficient apartment building. So when you have limited resources, you become more efficient in, in usage of those resources. Uh, and therefore you become uh, eco-friendly, you become energy efficient. Urban density allows half of humanity to live on 2.8% of the land. Again, this illustrates the concept of compactness. Consider just the infrastructure efficiency. So everything uh, is uh, used in a very conservative way. So you become energy efficient, you become infrastructure efficient, infrastructure efficient. So uh, the concept of efficiency comes in very strongly. The concentration of population and enterprises in urban areas greatly reduces the unit cost of piped water, sewers, drains and uh, so on. The national subsidy, uh, the nationally subsidized city of Manaus in northern Brazil answers the question of how to stop deforestation, answers the question of how to stop deforestation. So. Stopping deforestation means you are trying to uh, preserve or conserve the environment. You are you're trying to uh, prevent uh, tree cutting. And Manaus is an example of that. So stopping, so uh, this again is related to eco-friendliness. So stop 
deforestation an example is manaus uh, which means preserving the environment and how do you do, do that by providing people decent jobs by providing jobs they can afford uh, houses can security 100000 people who would otherwise be deforesting the jungle around manaus are now making such things as mobile phones and television so they are engaged in productive activities of course uh, fast growing cities are far from an unmitigated good fast growing cities are far from an unmitigated good so there is some there are some inefficiencies in uh, fast growing cities uh, which is mentioned here they concentrate crime pollution disease and injustice as much as they uh, contribute to business and innovation education and entertainment so these are the positive side of fast growing cities and these are the negative aspects crime pollution disease and injustice but if there overall a net good for those who move there it is because the cities offer more than just jobs they are transformative now if you remember in the first uh, line itself uh, we had encountered the uh, the keyword gradual improvement or transformation so this is reinforced in the last paragraph as well so there is a gradual change there is a transformation there is a, you know uh, improvement happening in the slums as well as the office towers and leafy suburbs the progress is from hick to metropolitan to cosmopolitan now uh, we note the, note down this point also in the last para for fast growing cities we have crime pollution disease injustice and we have uh, on the positive side we have business or jobs innovation education and entertainment so we have got the list of keywords uh, which we have noted down and with this uh, set of words we are going to answer all the questions now we are not going to uh, go back to the passage but before i do that uh, let me just remind you that uh, the reference of uh, fast growing cities is not exactly equal to uh, the uh, squatter cities uh, fast growing cities can be um, a subset of the squatter cities but uh, not all squatter cities are fast growing cities so there, there might be some uh, squatter cities which are already uh, quite matured in, uh, in, in in itself and some which are very nascent which are uh, which are starting to grow so with that <coughs> let's go to the let's go to the questions from the passage it can be inferred that the cities are good places to live in for all the following reasons except so let's look at the options number 1 have suburban areas as well as office areas now this is nowhere listed in the passage we have not listed this down in any of our keywords so let's park this and and see the next uh, option help prevent destruction of the environment which means conserving the environment or eco friendly or green which has been mentioned consistently in the passage 
so people will uh, you know um, want to live in a place which is eco friendly so it's a good place to to live so this is a reason for people to uh, live in cities so this is definitely one reason so this cannot be the answer because the answer is asking for an exception offer employment opportunities so it is clearly mentioned uh, that cities offer decent jobs so this is jobs it is clearly mentioned so people will want to stay in a place which offers good jobs so this is a, again a reason for uh, uh, people to stay in cities contribute to the cultural transformation of residents transformation is a, a very clear theme that has been mentioned in the passage so there is a gradual change improvement all of that so this is again a, a good reason for people to stay in the cities now we go back to uh, option number 1 have suburban areas as well as office areas now you might argue by saying that yes this could also be a, a good reason for people to stay in cities because they might uh, prefer to stay in a uh, in a quiet uh, suburb suburban area uh and they might prefer to work in a more bustling uh, industrial area so if these areas are segregated then um, you know they'll have best of both worlds but this is an assumption that it is nowhere mentioned in the passage that uh, this is a reason for people preferring to stay in cities so therefore uh, you cannot assume that you know this uh, is true so this is not mentioned in the passage therefore this is the uh, right answer this is the exception because all the other three are clearly mentioned and we have listed that them down in our keywords so option 1 is the right answer for this question moving on which of the following statements would undermine the author's stand regarding the greenness of cities undermine means weaken we can the authors uh, stand regarding the greenness of cities now let's see the options which means that uh, uh, which of the following if true would uh, actually weaken the authors uh, argument uh, that cities are green so option number 1 the high density of cities leads to an increase in carbon dioxide and global warming this definitely is a good reason to weaken the author's argument because it has been mentioned that in in certain cities uh, there is pollution uh, there is a uh, uh, contribution to pollution or uh, you know global warming so this is a reason uh, which can uh, weaken the author's statement let's look at the other options over the last decade the cost of utilities has been increasing for city dwellers now cost of utilities has nothing to do with greenness uh, cost of utilities can increase for many factors it can uh, increase due to government policies uh, due to forex uh, uh, you know rate change due to crude pricing uh, prices rising in the international market and so on so it is not related to greenness of the cities uh, in any way so this is uh, irrelevant so this is not Uh, an option the compactness of big cities in the west increases the incidence of violent crime now crime yes is mentioned uh, you know as a uh, negative characteristic of uh, some of the cities uh, but crime has nothing to do with greenness again greenness is uh, is eco friendliness crime is a different thing so again this is irrelevant sorting through rubbish contributes to the rapid spread of diseases now though disease has been mentioned uh, as a negative factor in certain cities it is not clearly mentioned that uh, um, you know sorting of garbage leads to rapid spread of diseases this is not mentioned in the passage you might infer it but this is not mentioned in the passage uh, and if this were true then definitely uh, we can't call that uh, to be a very uh, uh, green city but this is not clearly mentioned in the passage so uh, therefore we cannot assume this to be true so this is also not true 
Now the only option that we are left with is option 1 which is logically correct and is mentioned also as an indirect <coughs> uh, negative contributor in certain cities. So the high density of cities leads to an increase in carbon dioxide and global warming definitely would weaken the statement that cities are green. So this is the correct answer. Moving on to the next question. In the context of the passage, the author refers to Manaus in order to. Now, you see the uh, the reason why I had asked you to note down the uh, examples given. Now, if you remember, Manaus was listed down as an example for uh, stopping deforestation or preserving the environment. So, now let's look at the options. Explain where cities source their labor for factories. This is not mentioned uh, anywhere in the passage, ruled out. Describe the infrastructure efficiencies of living in a city. Infrastructure efficiency is mentioned, but it is not in connection to Manaus. Manaus was not uh, uh, mentioned uh, as an example of infrastructure efficiency. So this is ruled out. Explain how urban areas help the environment. Yes stop deforestation means uh, preserving the environment or helping the environment so yes this is one of the reasons uh, or the main reason not one of the reason this is the main reason for citing Manaus as an example help the environment uh, you might get confused with the last option promote cities as employment hubs for the people now yes Manaus did uh, mention that uh, um, the, the way to stop deforestation was to way to stop deforestation was to provide jobs to people but as I said providing jobs was the means of uh, stopping deforestation it was not uh, the intention um, the intention was to stop deforestation and therefore uh, helping the environment st or stopping deforestation uh, is the right answer so we don't choose four uh, we choose three question four this one says according to the passage Squatter cities are environment friendly for all the following reasons except again environment friendly and except so of the four reasons given three would be a good reason for cities to be environment friendly one would be not and let's see the options the streets are kept clean this is nowhere mentioned in the passage uh, you can argue that yes if the streets are kept clean then uh, definitely uh, the city is, is green and clean, so it is uh, eco-friendly. But it is very clearly said according to the passage, so you cannot assume anything which is not told in the passage. They sort out garbage. Yes, it is very clearly mentioned um, that garbage uh, sorting happens in many cities. Uh, they recycle material, yes. Uh, recycling material and garbage sorting are very closely related so uh, that actually um, prevents you know uh, garbage from piling up and uh, keeps the city clean and green um, so definitely both two and three contributes to the greenness of the cities their transportation is energy efficient yes it is mentioned that uh, you know uh, they, they uh, preserve uh, the resources so um, they're very uh, you know careful in the way that they use energy so um, the transportation is energy efficient correct and this definitely is a contributing factor to uh, the greenness of cities so your transportation is energy efficient you, you produce less pollution definitely contributes uh, to the greenness of the city now we come back to option one the streets are kept clean now this is this can be a contributor but it is not mentioned in the passage so therefore this is the exception 
that we are looking for. So according to the passage, this their streets are kept clean is not mentioned. So this is the correct answer. And note that uh, streets being kept clean are also not appearing in our list of keywords. The last question. We can infer Calthorpe statement still jars with most people. That means most people do not agree. Most people do not agree with Calthorpe statement because. Now we go back uh, to the list of uh, <coughs> keywords that we have noted. And uh, Calthorpe was noted for environment friendliness. So Calthorpe's argument was in favor of cities being eco-friendly or environment friendly, nothing else. So we'll look at the options and <coughs> we'll see what, which of the options relate to that. So the first option says, consider cities to be very crowded and polluted. This is not what Calthorpe stated. Do not consider cities to be eco-friendly. Calthorpe precisely talks about eco-friendliness. So yes, this is the correct option. Option two is the correct option because Calthorpe talks about uh, cities being eco-friendly and people who do not consider cities to be eco-friendly will not agree with Calthorpe's statement. Uh, let's look at the other options as well. Regard cities as places of disease and crime not stated by Calthorpe. Do not regard cities as good places to live in. Now, this is a very generic statement. Uh, and Calthorpe was very clearly talking about eco-friendliness. He was not talking about, uh, you know, any generic uh, um, concept like, you know, cities uh, are good places to live in or anything like that. He was very specific about eco-friendliness. So, option two is the correct option. Now you can see that uh, we just used the keywords that we had listed down to answer all the questions. We did not go back to the passage at all. Okay, so this is what I'm trying to uh, illustrate and we'll uh, do this in the, in the subsequent passages as well.